if you are seeing this for the first time, you might think, oh boy, so what are we going to do in the future? I'm going to sit at home, eat pizza all day, be 120 kilos and just enter the metaverse and look like Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, or Angelina Julie and uh, that's it. Hi, Chris, and welcome to another episode of Ledger Nation series about NFTs. Today, we will talk about a super, super exciting topic, which is the metaverse and the real estate in the metaverse. So today we will discuss topics such as what is the metaverse? Uh, why should I buy real estate in the metaverse? What is real estate in the metaverse? And how can I actually make money with it? So let's start right away. Chris, can you please tell us what is the metaverse? This is a very, very interesting question. And uh, recently it became even more interesting since the launch of Meta or the new name of Facebook. This is when actually all metaverse companies that were developing uh, for the past couple of years, their products actually started exploding in value. And um, of course there, there are different approaches to answer what is the metaverse and i guess one that would make it easy for the people that are not professional or not very deep inside is that actually we're kind of already living in something like a metaverse for example what we do at the moment this zoom meeting this is actually part of the metaverse because you're in frankfurt and i'm in sofia so we're not together but in the same time we are communicating so this is um uh, in a way um, connecting digitally with other people. So in the blockchain world, of course, there is um, a more detailed already a vision of how a metaverse should look like or is looking like already. And of course, we are so early in the first steps of a, a metaverse uh, so that no one can really say what it's going to look like in five years. Uh, but at the moment, some of the topics part of Metaverse are, of course, you have some kind of intellectual property in the digital world or mm -hmm. on the blockchain. And uh, the use case at the moment, quite literal, is, of course, having, uh, having an NFT, which is part of one of the Metaverse projects, let's say, and two of the most um, experienced so far, uh, which have, uh, is one of them is Decentraland, which have been working for the past about three years. And the second one is the Sandbox, which have been developing their product for the past two plus years. Uh, and these are the most uh, advanced metaverses so far that are also decentralized. Of course, one should make a difference. What is decentralized and centralized metaverse? Uh, the other example of a centralized metaverse, currently we still have no uh, real practical touch with it, but it, this is the meta or the metaverse of uh, Facebook, so to say. Um, and uh, the, so far, the decentralized metaverse means that you can develop your own. Let's say if you buy a piece of land, because you can buy land, we're going to talk about this a bit later, but you can buy land in a metaverse in one of these projects. And then on, in, in this land, you can develop your own project or experience. Could be a game. Like, uh, for example, a couple of days ago, um, uh, I found out about a game called Decentral Games. This is actually a poker game in which wow. you earn money just for playing over there. Mm -hmm. You can have a, um, uh, something like a object. Usually it's shoes, a jacket, a hat, a shirt or things like that. And then you're if you have that in the form of NFT, you're allowed to play in this game or delegate somebody to play uh, instead of you. And you have certain challenges that you have to complete every single day. And in return, you get the token of the game, which is ice. And uh -huh. um, so this is one of the, and they were, um, they are actually developing this experience in Decentraland. So they have quite huge chunk of land over there. And they decided, okay, we're gonna build this kind of casino and uh, people will be able to come and play poker in our casino. So this okay. is one form of the metaverse currently that is developing. Yeah. So basically the metaverse is this digital space where we can meet and we can interact with each other. So one example is like to have a conversation. Another example is just to play a game with each other. 
there is a wonderful video um, I saw a couple of weeks ago um, where this guy explained that actually kids nowadays are already living a lot in the metaverse because they do not only meet in person to play, but they also meet online to play online games. And I remember it from my time when we were playing playing multiplayer, you know, yeah. uh, through the internet. But today, actually, you can buy things in these games, you can exchange and sell things. So kids also learn this financial aspect of the whole thing. So the metaverse is a very interesting place. Uh, and you mentioned you can actually buy land in the metaverse and there are different metaverses currently existing. Um, so maybe the first question I have is, do you think that one metaverse will establish itself as the future metaverse? Or do you think we will stay with multiple metaverses and you will go to certain metaverses for certain things? Maybe we can talk about this a little bit. So what can I do in the central land? What, what do I do in the sandbox? Is there any difference? Yeah, so a uh, very, uh, very good question once again. And um, I would like to actually start before that with something else, which is very common in the NFT world, which is the base layer more or less for the uh, metaverse world <laughs> after it. And um, in the NFT world, what is becoming really important is the interoperability of the NFTs. And mm -hmm. uh, the interoperability has two aspects. The first one is that uh, your, uh, uh, your, let's say you have a shoe or a house in the metaverse or a piece of land or just a photo or any kind of other digital object that is on the blockchain, this is now the, the same. It is an NFT. So basically you make it equal. And uh, so I can exchange uh, my five shoes for your house, let's say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> More or less. Uh, uh, that would be nice to exchange <laughs> shoes for houses, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the second aspect of the interoperability is that you can also do that between different blockchains. So let's say my shoe was made in uh, Ethereum blockchain, but your house is in uh, Solana. So now still, this is uh, not possible to bridge between these two blockchains. And just a yeah. second, Chris, before we continue, maybe we should start with that, that actually these metaverses are built on layer one blockchains. Yes. So yeah. these are layer two solutions. So let's say the sandbox is built on Ethereum. This is something we yeah. should we should say here. Yeah. This central land as well. Yeah. And this actually, of course, no financial advice, but this tells you that Ethereum is gonna be really huge because currently most of the metaverses are created on Ethereum blockchain. And one other which we should miss is also Axie Infinity, which currently is the biggest in revenue. Uh, from all of them because it already has an active user base of more than 2 million uh, daily mm -hmm. active users but anyways um so these two aspects of interoperability are very important for your question who is going to be the leader or are there going to be more participants in the metaverse and of course the logical answer here in my opinion is that it's going to be quite many different metaverses and uh, you might have a university metaverse or um farming metaverse, uh, clima metaverse, all these types, different types of metaverses. And um, one is going to go there because they need something. Of course, on the other hand, still nowadays, um, in the case of that I gave as an example, this poker game, they have piece of land in the central land. And from their website, they're basically um, uh, teleporting. The players are teleporting themselves over there so they don't have to walk through other pieces of land to get there so it's not like in real world that you have to go to work by car or by public transportation you can teleport yourself to your working place let's say in the metaverse so the aspect of course of uh, real estate is going to be much more different than uh, in the real world nowadays yeah, because in the real world nowadays, it's all about the location. You know, you say location, location, location. 
And if I have uh, like an, an office in the city center, uh, probably I pay a very high rent. Uh, but uh, if I have an office somewhere outside of the city, probably no one wants to come to work there because there are no restaurants, shops. It's not a very attractive location. Maybe there is no transportation to this place, but I pay a, a less rent. So you're saying that in the metaverse, you, we can transport ourselves somewhere, uh, which is a, a very interesting concept because then location, location, location is maybe not uh, a factor anymore for pricing your piece of land. Now let's talk about the, the, the other metaverse, which is the sandbox. Maybe we can uh, show again, like an, an overview, how it, how it looks like, and you can tell us where can we buy land for, for the sandbox and what can we do in the sandbox? Yeah. So this is the homepage of sandbox over here to the left. You can see the different menus. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them I think might be the first one to have a look is map. So when we go to map, you can see over here, uh, is a huge, huge, uh, map with everything inside the, the sandbox. If you move over here, you can see certain parts of the land. So basically this is the full map of the sandbox. Is there a limited number of plots there? Yes, currently uh, there are 166,000 plots and they're planning to release some more soon. They have a certain limit of the plots they're going to release in total and they're still on the way of releasing all of them. Okay, so anyways, you can you can have a look over here maybe to explain. Oops, uh, I zoomed a bit too much. You can have a look. This is Snoop Dogg, of course. Mm -hmm. He's quite prominent in the in the space. Actually, he's uh, just releasing an event, a concert, Snoop Dogg, uh, in the next weeks. So it's going to be a massive event in, in the sandbox uh, event space. Uh, but over here, you can actually have a, um, a view over the size of the different plots of land. You can see the smallest one over here is one by one, which is a single piece of land. And then there are certain pieces that are three by three, certain that are six by six, uh, 12 by 12. And the biggest ones, Atari over here, the, the game brand, it is 12 by uh, 24 by 24. So this is the biggest size of, of land in the sandbox. When Snoop Dogg bought this land, he can just uh, create a concert on the sandbox. And if I just go on the map here and click on his land, I can just join and watch his concert for free or how does it work? No, so you, ha you have to buy a ticket for the concert, of course, like any normal, but the this ticket in this case is, is an NFT ticket that you uh -huh. own. Of course, you own it after the concert. And let's say this was the first um, Snoop Dogg concert in the Sandbox Metaverse, which is quite unique experience. Only 5,000 people could have joined it. And this, and then the price of this ticket on the secondary market as a collectible, of course, is going to increase with the time. Okay, so I understand. Something that you own, and um, so this is basically changing the paradigm of owning a, a ticket for an event. Imagine you mm. had you have the ticket of the first uh, Beatles concert. Mm, mm. I mean, this okay. is. I get Worth it. A couple of hundred thousand, maybe. Can I just go and see how his land looks like from Snoop Dogg? Can I go into his lands? <laughs> let's let's click on Snoop Dogg. So I'm controlling the, the the land right now. So I'm clicking on Snoop Dogg, and basically, he yeah. hasn't built anything yet. Okay, so let's say because I heard that he's planning on building his real life mansion on the metaverse. So basically, yeah. if he does that we will see like a house here, right? Yeah, big house, mansion. Okay, uh, here Snoop Dogg is building his mansion inside the sandbox and you are invited to the party. Ah, so I can get a, an early pass. And this is, I guess, how he is planning to make money, you know? Enter the I... Snoopverse, so the parking collection of cars, cool private party, avatar store. So he's basically building his own little metaverse on his land in the sandbox. 
but of course here it's important to to to, uh, to mention that this this is how he's going to interact with his community because you see over here 20,000 plus 20,000 NFT cars mm -hmm. so this means that 20,000 people are going to buy this NFT of his car and by buying it they become part of his metaverse but they also become owners of a small part of this many uh, metaverse so it's not like nowadays you're just his fan you buy his albums you listen you go to his concerts and that's it but in this um, in the blockchain or web3 uh, space you become also partially owner of his intellectual property by buying one of these nfts so okay. this is what is actually the change of the paradigm in general and another very important thing i i would like to mention about the sandbox is that a lot of companies use it as a as a advertising banner because if you have your logo like this everyone that comes to the sandbox they see your company so let's say with atari you see their their logo you see snoop dog here uh yeah obviously the sandbox you you can see a couple of punks here uh here and there yeah. so i guess the owners here are owners of a crypto punk that just bought the land. Not necessarily. You can uh, also simply upload an image that you like on on the piece of land that you own. So oh, you can right. do whatever you decide. Okay. So now let's talk about the other important question: How do I buy land? Okay. So now uh, let's go to OpenSea. And there we can buy land on on OpenSea. So basically. The piece of land is like an NFT, which we can buy on OpenSea. It, it even rhymes. Yeah, uh, you can see this is the um, OpenSea profile website of the Sandbox. There are in, in total 102,000 uh, items, 16,000 owners. So you can see only a few own precious land in the sandbox nowadays. Floor price is about three ETH and 100,000 ETH traded already. So if you go over here to the buy now section, you can do another selection over here by type because there is also assets. And there you go. You see over here, currently the cheapest one is three ETH. Uh, but over here, you can see these are the coordinates of this piece of land. Mm -hmm. And on the map of land over here, you can uh, write them down and you'll find where this place actually is. So ah, this interesting. Is okay, Chris. So basically we can buy land on, on OpenSea. And uh, what we also spoke about is that it's already the secondary market. So the whole land that has been released has been already bought and I can only buy it on the secondary market, which is like incredible. Um, yeah. So Chris, why does this land have a value? What can I do now as a real estate owner? Let's say I buy a piece of land. How, what can I do with it? How can I make money with it? How can I produce a return on my investment? Well, I already gave a, a small example with this poker game. Actually, uh, in Decentraland currently, uh, there are uh, about 20,000 daily active users. And about 20% of that is of the poker game that I spoke about. So you can imagine this is very, 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 very early in the development. And at the moment, most people that buy land actually, especially on Decentral land, is to develop a project or an experience on that piece of land so that people can come and participate in this experience. Okay, um, so I'm now thinking about more um, of the real life examples. Let's say if I want to rent the land to give it for rent to someone do you know if there is already market for that does it exist already i don't think it exists because still we're in the face of uh speculation on this market so to say um and most of the people that well, this is actually what i wanted to say is that from a technical perspective uh, what the metaverse is giving to the developers of experiences is that they don't have to concentrate on the design of how their space exactly looks or to develop um, from scratch the surrounding area or the ecosystem, the so-called SDK, Software Development Kit, but they already have something and they st 
bootstrap on that to develop their own experience. So this is enabling them to create something on top of something that already exists. And um, I think the moment when uh, it's it's not enough land anymore, then or already everybody has been using the land to uh, have their own experience or to produce an exp or to create an experience and all the land plots are filled with people using that, then you might start uh, demanding for renting. But still, there is no use, not so many use cases of yeah. this land. So that uh, there is huge demand for it. And of course, the biggest uh, currently upside in the value of uh, any metaverse or uh, the, such kind of land is because of the uh, release of Meta or the new Facebook name. This gave a huge hype of all projects in this area and many people started developing in this area. But the thing is that currently the largest uh, advance have uh, Decentraland and Sandbox because they have been working for already years uh, on their technology and their product. And it's going to take quite a lot of money and time for new uh, comers in the market. Mm, can I buy something else than land? Can I buy a building? This is an interesting uh, aspect because this is not the real world where when you build something, uh, it has to stay there for years. You can actually build your uh, stadium, football stadium. And uh, after six months, you decide, OK, something is not working or I want to change it. You can basically destroy it. Uh, so it's not something that um, is that permanent over there. Of course, it takes a lot of uh, manpower to build a stadium in the metaverse. <laughs> with all the experiences. Okay, so I know that we spoke about another project and I think it's interesting to mention it, that you can also buy apartments in the metaverse. Yeah. Uh, there are like a, a different one than the central end and the sandbox, where you can buy apartments. I'm thinking, okay, so nowadays you, you invite your friends to your place and then, I don't know, you watch a movie or you eat something together or I don't know, you, you make like a game night. And maybe in the future, our kids will be like, oh, I'm not going to come home, hang out with my friends. I'm going to go to our metaverse apartment to hang out with my friends and to play with my friends. Maybe this is the future. So can you tell us a little bit more about this buying an apartment thing? Yeah, actually, one project that I, uh, I wanted to share with you, it's uh, quite interesting. It's called the World Wide Web 3. So this is the open sea page of world wide web land you can see the the movement in the because it's actually started quite a um, few days ago on 29th of november so apartments so are a... still cheap <laughs> <laughs> buy them exactly. while they're hot <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly you can choose your type penthouse there are only 69 penthouses currently of course nothing else than a penthouse <laughs> <laughs> yeah and uh, there's some like uh, Burj Al Arab uh, penthouse and stuff like that. I think this project became successful more or less because of the meta, metaverse, the central and sandbox. And people want to see more and more of this experience. And that's why they're buying or they're okay. entering this kind of project. Because it's one way how this space would look like from inside. Yeah, so I think it's going to take a while until we actually see how the real metaverse is going to look like or what the demanded metaverse is going to look like. Now what we yeah. see are projects that are starting to develop. Of course, they gain very precious experience in the field. And uh, eventually they're going to have to pivot in one or the other direction so that they're successful and meet the expectations of the general user. Mm. And uh, something that I would actually like to, to mention kind of as a conclusion of, of our conversation, which is important, uh, if you are seeing this for the first time, you might think, oh boy, so what are we going to do in the future? I'm going to sit at home, eat pizza all day, be 120 kilos and just enter the metaverse and look like Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, or Angelina Jolie. And uh, that's it. Why should I do that? And uh, in my opinion, we should actually take advantage of the technology we have over here and try to develop it in the best possible way. Because after all, you can sit in your uh, couch at home and go anywhere in the world and meet anybody in the world 
in a more real life experience than what we have now with uh, with just sitting on the couch and uh, you can actually be, might be able to touch things in this room so even more interactive than than what we have now because i cannot uh, touch your glasses now you know? mm. <laughs> or uh, click something on your computer uh, but in, in the metaverse this will be possible and um, mm -hmm. also it's going to be providing value financial value to the people so uh, we will basically be able to um, uh, shape this world in, or this metaverse or however you call it in the way we want in the best way so that we can um, have a sustainable way of living so basically use it to live a better life than to live mm. a worse life mm. and, um, and you were saying something about the financial uh, aspect of it well yeah because uh, in, in blockchain world everybody can participate everybody can w w uh, own part of it And this is something we've been discussing with you, the fractionalizing of uh, NFTs in the blockchain, which is still questionable. But I think if there is a will, there is a way. So they're gonna, there's gonna be a way to find how to uh, fractionalize your property so that more people can participate. And uh, so once again, even in the game in Metaverse, you, in order to play, somebody you your friend or a person you uh, that delegated to you somebody has to own an nft or a property in the metaverse so that you can participate in it and um, even if you don't own somebody can delegate it to you which is even better i mean everybody can participate in this world and have a better way of life mm. uh, but it's going to take us quite a time until we reach this moment Yeah, for me, you know, wrapping my head around it, like metaverse and the real estate in the metaverse, I still need some time to, I think, grasp the use cases behind it. Because in real life, I invest in real estate. And yeah. in real life, I know the traditional ways to invest in real estate and to earn money from real estate, which is completely different in the metaverse. Because when I first started talking to you about real estate in the metaverse, I was trying to apply the typical business cases or use cases from the real world and you were telling me no no this, this is not gonna work out this is not gonna work out there's no like location aspect actually uh, there's still no renting um yeah so the use cases will be very different we actually have to think from a very very different perspective And this is a learning process for everyone, for the companies that develop the metaverse, for the users, for the investors. This will be a learning process. And I'm so excited to see what the future will hold. And I'm still thinking about buying some land. <laughs> uh, but I, I don't know, it's pure speculation, as you said, because I still don't know what's going to be the use case with it. Like, how can I make money? Because Uh, I'm not a game developer. I'm not going to develop a game, but maybe I can rent it out to a game developer that doesn't have money to, to buy land. So these are like use cases I'm thinking about, but uh, we'll see what the future holds. So thanks very much, Chris. Uh, this was a wonderful conversation. Thank you for having me. As always, I'm happy to share my uh, knowledge and I'm very excited about the future of uh, Web3 technologies.